What are sessions, right? And then what are cookies specifically? This is not helpful. Let's do this for just this part. Cool, I'll give you a second to read this, and then I will digest it for you in simpler terms. The explain like I'm five, right? Are you just gonna stare at me? You gotta read the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, it's a joke to you. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry, the light bothering you guys? Yeah, go for it. Go, Nikki. Nikki plus plus. Except you guys don't have that. What you guys had at some point was something called the taco bot. And you can just give people tacos. Like if you went to your Slack and like put at Ian and then use the taco emoji, it would be like, you gave Ian a taco. And it would be like the equivalent of plus plus. Uh, that bot is still under construction, but it'll be there soon. Cool. If anyone wants to work on it, just touch base with Ian. He is, he is going to be working on that. All right, so quick summary. All right, Flash as I just said, allows you to store data for one extra request. And that's useful for something like maybe like error messages, or if you're building like an e-commerce store, and you're like, great, you click this button, and you added something to your shopping cart. And then you refresh, and that kind of goes away, but your shopping cart still has the stuff. So kind of some practical uses for Flash. Another type of hash that's available is something that can last more than one request. Essentially, all the requests. So what it will do is, not just for one more request, it'll store data, but it'll store persistent data from request to request to request. So until we had something like this, there was this phrase that says that HTTP is a stateless protocol. What that would mean is, if you remember, boom, inside the show, do I have access to at nachos, nachos, dot all? No, that means that the data from request to request, controller action to controller action, right, they do not know about each other. There is no shared state between each of these requests. So HTTP is a stateless protocol. If you hear that, that's what that means. And it's designed that way because if I had nachos, dot all inside my show, and then I went to a new, and then I went to an edit, and then I went back to index, and I had nachos at all saved every single time, that would mean that once I start going to like the 14th, 15th, 16th website, I would have all the data from my 16th previous requests. You can imagine that if you've been browsing the internet for an hour, your internet would be so incredibly slow because you'd have the request from the last 800 websites you just went to. Does that make sense? So this is, a, this is a feature, not a bug, right? It is done on purpose. Cool? And so how do we actually kind of use something like this? Or what are some practical use cases for storing state or data for more than one request? Yeah, right? So I think if you've actually done the like the labs, we kind of talk about this login feature where it would be crazy if you logged into like Bookface and then anytime you click the link, it asks you to log in again to see. You'd be like, oh, what kind of user experience? One star, right? No bueno. So you want to be able to store this user information that's logged in. And then at the end, I'll show you guys something cool. Um, but for now, that's kind of one of the practical things for it. But also, as I mentioned earlier, like an e-commerce. If I'm trying to build like a shopping cart, request to request, I still want to know the contents of my shopping cart. Like if I went to Amazon and I was like, great, I'm going to go buy this book. Cool. But I also want a tire. Cool. And I want a humidifier. Cool. The internet's great in 2019. I still want the data for my shopping cart in every single subsequent request until I log out or something like that or I empty the shopping cart. So that's what we're going to build today. Just this fu pure basic functionality of like a shopping cart. So like this like e-commerce store. Um, but a session allows you, it's just a hash that can store data from request to request. 
If you remember the way the internet works, this request response cycle, you make a request to the server, the server comes back with a request after processing some information. Yeah? You guys like tired from all the, the WeWork orientation, the launch. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. In that case, uh, allow me to just talk at you for the next 40 minutes. Like, I get it. You're like zened out. So, uh, but, I mean, I've been zen before. Not when I'm on like this delicious cold brew coffee. TM. So, when you make the request, the server will process it. It'll hit some sort of index, and then it will do something and send you back a response, right? Part of this, if you've like actually like read through the docs and like over-researched, because um, it's kind of in the readings, but it's easy to glaze over and forget, there's something called a cookie. Does anyone know what that is? It saves your info, yeah. So. Private key in what way? Yes, it is a key value store, All right? And allow me to like hopefully demonstrate. So let's say I'm in Flavor Town. I'm in some website and I open my Chrome DevTools. All right? Look at this. See what happens when I don't have to like go into lecture. All right. So network. I'm sorry, not network. Uh, application. Yeah, application. You can see there's something called local storage, session storage, and something called cookies. If I open cookies and I go to local 3000, do you notice that I have all these other tabs open? But how many cookies do I have for local host 3000? Uh, how many cookies do I have? Cool, one, right? And in this cookie, yeah, 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 I, that was a bad question on my half. There's one. And inside this one cookie are a bunch of key value stores. All right? Do you remember the Revengers, Minty Fresh, the Red Bull, the Bull Red Session? Sorry, excuse me. Ooh, spicy sauce. That was a good one. So it will store in one cookie a bunch of these key value pairs. If I go to, say, um, a different website, what is this? Uh, it's like a blog. Cool. What is this website? Um, Venture Beat. Cool. I was just reading about. Something about passwords. I don't know. I'm boring. If I were to go to my application, my cookies, there's a bunch of these cookies. Notice, right, is there anything past the .com, right, or the .net? Cookies are what are known as uh, domain specific. The domain would be like whatever's between the HTTPS, the protocol, and the .com. So, Cookies are domain specific. When you make a request to the server, it comes back with a response. And in that response, the first time you make that request, it will build you a cookie. So let's take a look at that. If I were to delete my cookies, and I were to refresh, it will just build this new one for me. This current session, and this is the value. So inside the cookie, there is session data that Rails will build for you. Cool? Who here can read and understand what this is? Actually, I should have expected no hands, right? I feel stupid now. Right? Nobody, right? Because it's like encrypted. As it should be, because what would happen if this wasn't encrypted? Yeah, you could log into someone else. You could just read the data. It's like a human being. And we don't want that, especially if we've talked about like shopping carts or like being able to sign in securely inside a website. We don't want that being read securely. So Rails will take all the session data, run it through some sort of like hashing algorithm that makes it not human readable, and then send it inside the cookie. And because the cookie is passed between every single request, the session is passed between every single request. Yes? All right, awesome. So therefore, the session is available everywhere inside your application. Is that fair? And you can store data in there. 
just a key value pair, very similar to Flash, except the session goes from request to request, where Flash will persist for just one. Sweet. So let's take that data and let's start practicing what is going to be absolutely paramount for Mod 3, and that is focusing on the process. Rails has a way, a Rails way. And it's very easy to do the error-driven development. And that is like, what does this error say? No route matches get to awesome? Cool, let me go make the route get to awesome, right? There's like a Rails way. But in JavaScript, you need to have a really good process. Which means that if I ask you to build a deliverable, you need to be able to break down this big problem into much smaller problems in English. And then just start Googling the code to solve every single one of those very small problems. Does that make sense? So we're going to try practicing that today. And then just get into the habit of being able to do this. And I promise you, every feature you ever build and Mod 3 and learning JavaScript will be so much easier. So the feature is going to be, I'm sorry, before I get started, questions on sessions or cookies, what we're about to do. That's really about it. Those four things. No, not yet. Uh, I will not be your JavaScript instructor. But I, I may or may not make a comeback in React, maybe. So any, any questions on what a session is, what a cookie is, how it kind of has access to it, and what it's doing for us, and what we're about to build? Wait, what goes into session? That is a completely separate topic. Um, and you'll use like local and session storage more in React. Um, and so we'll cover that at that point. Awesome. Um, cool. So session storage is, to answer the question though, is more like what the browser considers a session versus what we're about to do, and that is what Rails considers a session. Because as you know, as awesome as Rails is, Rails with Rails, there are other frameworks that are out there. Maybe there's something that's, no? Yeah, Rails only. Uh, if there's a front end that doesn't necessarily rely on like a back end, you can use the browser session to do something very similar to what we're doing. Cool? Awesome. So check it out. I have a menu here, right? And this is my menu. This basically looks like what page Right? I mean, even look at the route here. Right? It's the index page. Cool? And what I want to do is I want to have the shopping cart here right? that I do not currently know how to do. And I have a list of all of my nachos. What I want is, all right, and this was like a, a freebie. I gave this to you. What I want is a button here where I click it and it says add to cart. And then I have on my cart. There's no CSS, like obviously it probably should be like sticky to the right, something like that, or like an actual shopping cart button. Let's just build a feature, right? First make it work, then make it sexy. I have this button and it should add to my cart. I want to be able to see it here and on refresh, I should still be able to see it persisted. I also want to be able to click a different one and also add that into my shopping cart. Cool. So without teaching you anything new, let's take this big problem, let's break it down to small little problems and figure out that process. The first thing I'm thinking is, great, well, what does this button do? Right? I just described what the feature should do. Let's think through how we can kind of write that in code and pseudocode it. On this button click, where should this button route me to? This is like where the weird parts come up, right? Like, mm, I, I know what I want to do, but how do I break this down? If I understand Rails, I know this button right now will post to somewhere by default. I know this information. What route does it go to? Is it even important what route it goes to right now? Not really, because guess who could change the route at will? Right? You could do it. So what I need to really determine is where do I want to send this button to? 
And the idea here is, let's see, I want to send it to some sort of controller action because the route is irrelevant, right? The route is just a name that points to a controller action. Hmm, what controller action should I point this, like, add a nacho to? Like, what? Cool, so the route could be something like, I don't know, add a nacho, whatever. Hmm, something like add to cart, great. What controller do you want to go to? Should adding something to a cart go in the nacho controller? Right? Just think about it, right? How do you want to design this? Should adding something to a shopping cart go to the nacho controller? Right? Some of you are saying yes, some of you are saying no. Right? If you, were to if you were able to, some of you can do this. All of you can do this. If you had the ability to make your own controller, right? what controller should this add to my cart go to? Something like maybe, I don't know, like a cart controller. Because that's going to handle the logic for the cart. Cool? If I put it inside my nacho controller, while that will work, let's think through. All right? Let's say I'm really hungry and nachos ain't cutting it. And I want a burger and a hot dog. I know. I, I didn't eat lunch. I've just been drinking this coffee. <laughs> uh, actually, I had some yogurt. A yogurt controller, right? I had some yogurt in here. And I wanted to add all of these things into the cart. And, and the cart logic was stuck in the nacho controller. Would that make sense to you? No. So... Could you have determined through like maybe talking for a few minutes with a partner or by yourself, should this go to the nacho controller? Probably not. Let me just make a cart controller because I want to separate that logic. How would you do that? Would you Rails G resource cart? See? There you go. Right, because it builds what for you? Some like models, right? like a model, a migration. Do I need a cart model and do I need a cart table? Do I want to save my shopping cart to the database or do I want it just kind of temporarily as I'm like logged in? Right, so should I make a migration, a database for it, all that stuff? No, so it doesn't make sense to make the Rails G resource. I should Rails G controller just the cart. These are all things you can do. Did I ask you a question that you could not think of on your own? Yeah? So, if I'm on a website and order something, usually I can go back to that website and see the previous orders. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that not saved to a database? Uh, that is a hard question to answer. It depends. Sometimes it's saved. Right, and sometimes it's in sessions. Yeah. It depends on the type of user experience you want. So for right now, what we want is just like, I go to this page, I can keep track of all my nachos that I'm about to order because I'm hungry, and then either I can empty the cart or I can just leave. If I come back based on my session from before, if I didn't log out or delete my cookies, it should still be there. Cool. Great, so let's keep going. I have a button. I know I can go to like an add nacho route, cool. And I've determined the controller action I want to go, the controller I want to go to, a cart controller. What, God bless you, what is the name of the action you want in the cart? Do you want it to be new? Do you want it to be like add? Do you want it to be update? Do you want it to be delete? Like of all the things that you know, even in the English language or RESTful routing, what should this button do to my cart? Am I going to create a brand new cart every time I want to add something? So do you think it should be new or create? Right? Is it going to show me all of the carts that I have, probably not the index. Hmm. If I click this button, should it show me the details of the cart 
or should it somehow add something to it? Add something to it, right? So do you think it should be show, where I'm just getting the details? Am I going to delete something in my cart when I hit add to cart button? OK, OK. I'm starting to like, eliminate things here, right? So what do you want to name this method in your cart controller? Like an like a update action, right? I lost some of you. If I hit this button, I want to hit the cart controller with a method called update. That just reads in English to me like it makes sense. All right? I can name it anything I want, really. But for right now, I'm, gonna, I'm leaning toward update because that's what makes sense to me. And that's how it reads in English. Name you something? You sure? Yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily think just in English. Like I understand what you were saying. Yeah. In English, like I'm updating when it creates something in English. Hmm. That's very fair, right? The idea is that like update might not be able to create something within my cart. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, no. I mean, I I understand completely what real life does, but logically, I wouldn't. Okay. So. No worries. So before we get any further, right, uh, I need to have some sort of shopping cart. Hmm. What kind of data structure should this be? Should the cart be a string? Should the cart be a number? Should it be some sort of array? Should it be a hash? Or like, what do you think this cart should be? A hash or an array? Right, one of those, some sort of like collection, right? That makes sense. So, let's do this. When I hit this button, let's start building out piecemeal, and then we can kind of take it as we go. Oftentimes, when we get these big features, we feel the need to think through the entire way, and then we kind of get lost in it. If we build out step by step things that make sense to us. More questions will come up, and then we can Google and figure out those questions along the way. And you'll just hack your way until feature completion. And once you're there, you're like, oh, you know what? It would be nicer if I did this. Then you start to refactor. But first, you've got to make it work. So without getting crazy, let's have the button go to the route that we just talked about, and let's create that controller. So I can simply go to the Hmm. What view page would this be on again? Is it the show or the index? Or what view page would this be? Let's take a look at that route. The index, right? The index. So in the nachos view, there should be an index file. Let's take a look. In my views, oh, in my views. In my nachos, there's an index. Cool. And there it is. There's a button to, what does this do? Oh, look, currently it goes nowhere. Wow, embarrassing. Let's actually change this to add this banger of a nacho. All right, just add this nacho into the cart, right? My face. Cool. Actually, these buttons take emojis. Cookie. Cool. And where do we say we want this to go to? Like something like add to cart? That's just the, we're just talking about the route right now, right? Does this route exist? All right, well, let's figure it out. Where do I want to go? Cool. All right. So here I made one already, but let's just redo it for funsies. Cool. As we talked about, we're going to do some sort of update, right? What HTTP verb do we want? Come on now. Come on now. All right? Patch, All right? And this is like add to cart, I think. What is it? Yeah, slash add to cart. 
Cool. And that is going to go where again? Cool. 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 And then we can create a helper if we wanted to. So if I go back, can I just refactor this to um, add to car path? What does button to build me? Oh yeah, take that. It builds me a form which defaults to what HTTP verb? Post. Hmm. Will it ever hit this? No. So I need to probably mm, mm, a little, little method patch action. Before we get any further, let's just test to see if this works. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh yeah, you're right. Add nacho to cart path, right? Yeah, cool. So it should do a patch, hit this route. How can I test this? I need to have a cart controller with a method update, right? Cool, let's take a look at what we have here. Smart with an action of update. If I hit the buy bug, I know it's all wired up. Refresh, oof, look at that emoji. If I click this, I should see, boom, I'm there. God bless you, I'm there. So far, in this feature, have I introduced anything new to you? No, right? It's about breaking these large problems into small little pieces. So now I'm in this update, you're probably thinking like, all right, I might be stuck at this point. Great, I have a button, it goes through controller action, awesome. When you're in this controller action, and you're in the buy bug, what's the first thing you're looking for? What do you always really care about when you're in a controller action? France. Unfortunately, whoops. Unfortunately for, uh, oh, sorry. It's not useful for you, right? Unfortunately, it just has method patch, controller, cart, and there's some sort of action. It gets cut off, hold on. All right, permitted false, great. What do I actually need in these params for me to like update a cart? Okay, I need, I need the nacho data. I need the data from the nacho, right? We can all kind of agree on this, right? That's like easy. Is there a way I can click this button when I hit the controller action that data from the nacho comes through? Hmm, how do I send params on button to Rails? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, you like hit a point, you're like, this is what I need. This is what would be useful to me. I'm just gonna look this bad boy up. Huh, Rails links to, or button to, send parameters. All right, cool. Or this one, I, I clicked this already, cool. Let's just look. Do, do, do. Looks like you can just, Add this params option inside your button. Okay, what does that look like though? Uh, oh, look, see this? Button to, there's like a class, there's some sort of method patch, remote true, this means Ajax, don't worry about it. And I can literally pass it in params, the name of the field and the data. Let me just try that. Cool? Let me just see. Hmm. Huh. My index. I can just go. Huh. Let me see. Can I do something like params and pass in what would be useful about what we want to send over on the nacho? What would be useful data to send over? The ID. So I can say something like uh, the ID. This is the key. Do I have access to the nacho ID? What would it be? Cool. What else do you want to send over? Name of the nacho. Cool. So like name is key of nacho dot name. I think that's what the schema says. Actually, I, I know that's what the schema says. I, I made the flavor. I made flavor town. You know. For now, let's just send this, but that would be useful information, right? So what I want to see is uh, let's just get out of this buy bug. Go back here. Refresh. Oh, given for expected zero to three. Okay, 
So it looks like it needs to go inside this hash. I think it goes. Bloop. Hmm. Didn't like that. Am I missing something? Oh, got it, got it, got it. Cool. Uh, this needs to close, right? Powerful. What happens when I click this? What should I get? Buy bug again. But now I want to check to see whether or not that thing I just looked up worked. Mm. Powerful. Yeah. Uh, an old instructor built this, and the seed data for this is insanely detailed. Uh, and it is, it's actually hilarious. We'll take a look later. But look, there are the params go. Wow. Do you see what I'm saying? If you like have this feature that you don't know how to do, build the small stuff that you know how to do until you get to a point you're like, man, it'd be really nice to have this. And just look it up. Right? So cool. Now I have this. Huh. What would be useful here? What would be useful? Uh, now that I have the ID and the name, can we let the user know that, hey, they added the nacho? Right? Let's do one thing at a time, right? Let's let the user know they added this nacho. So first thing I want to do is inside my card controller, remember I have those params. I need to actually find the nacho based on what? The ID that I just sent across. This gives me the nacho object. Do I need this in the view? Do I need the nacho object in the view? Like if I told the user, hey, you just added trash can nachos, do I need the nacho in the view? Well, for now, it's kind of indeterminate. Let's just save this as a variable for now. What do I actually have that tells me the name of the nacho? Right, I have params at a key of nacho. Right, remember, params at a key of nacho. Oops, just kidding. Params at a key of, oh, name, ugh. Wow, that was embarrassing. Boom. Oh, let me fix that real quick. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right? Gives me the nacho name. How can I let the user know they've gotten it? What can I possibly do to take this data and pass it into the next request to let the user know that something happened? It's all coming back to me now. All right? There's some sort of notice, right? I want to get away from like errors because, again, Flash can be used for anything. So I would need Flash at a key of notice inside my index because I'm going to redirect them to the index, which is the nachos path. All right. So in the nachos path, which is the nacho index, I now have something called Flash at a key of notice. So let's go back to the index. Oop, built it for you. Cool. I, I made this earlier. Right? I'm just leading you up to it, but I'm just trying to save some time by like, building some of it. Yeah, I'm building it, right. Like, if you wanted to, um, I don't know, does anyone, uh, out of key of cooksters, cool. That means in, in the index, I would need to change this to what? Right, cool, let's not do that though. Just saying, I'm building it, right? So let's do this. Let's actually, um, let's get rid of the buy bug and see whether or not on this click, I should see a flash that says, hey, you, I'm sorry, let's do, uh, I need to do, this is gross. It would just tell it, it would just be like, yo, added the blank, uh, this needs to be interpolated, to your cart, bet, lols, right? So now I should see this message come through. Cool. Um, deep fried pizza nachos, you know it. Give me that. Boom! You just built this feature. Cool? So far, so good? 
All right. Now what I really want to see is actually like something like kind of come up though on the screen. Now let's think. This nacho that's, I just found it. Do I want to store it in flash? Do I want to use an instance variable? Or because I'm trying to keep this in my cart, what should I use? If I want to keep it in my cart to go from request to request to request. Session, right? And as I've just told you, session is just a normal hash, very similar to flash. I can say something like flash at a key of anything I want, right? So what do you want to name this key that's going to be your cart? Oh, cool. Uh, we just said it should be an array. So do I want it to be equal or do I want to like push or do I want to like shovel in? Shovel in what? The nacho object? Maybe, I don't know, like just the ID for now, something like that. I could shovel in the object, yeah, but then I would get like this nacho object. You know what? Cool. <laughs> just throw the whole object in there, whatever. All right? So session at a key of cart. Hmm. Do I have access to session everywhere in my application? Right. It's very similar to Flash, right? So inside my index, just like I have Flash here, my cart could instead say if there is, uh, let's, just, let's just keep that. Right. If there is a session at a key of cart, hmm. what is this again? It's an array, right? So this will just display an array if there is something in my cart. Let's see. If I hit bloop. Oh, undefined nil for nil class. Got it. Here's the problem. Can I shovel something into nil? Remember when I did flash at a key of dolphin? Do you remember this? If I access a key that doesn't exist inside a hash, what happens? I get I get nil. And then can I push into nil? No. So it gets a little tricky now because remember, you're just doing one thing at a time. You're just trying to figure this out. So I need something like session is, I don't know, session at key of cart is equal to an empty array. And then I can push into it. All right? Let's think through this logic here. Hmm. Every time I hit update, what happens to session at a key of cart? It resets. And I can never add more than one thing. Is that a good user experience? One star, right? Now let's think through here. Um, hmm. My cart. We talked a little bit about the idea that uh, the cart logic should not live inside like the nacho controller or the burger controller or the yogurt controller, but it should live in its own controller because of the logic. Hmm. Do I have access to the cart? Right? Because I'm trying to build this array. I'm trying to build the shopping cart, right? And I want every single controller to be able to access the cart. Right? That's fair. We kind of talked about this. So we kind of ran into this problem where it, right now it's an array. I can also see an issue with the fact that not every controller will have access to this kind of cart object. Is there a controller that every single controller inherits from that might be a good place to put the shopping cart? Cool. Where would that be? So smart. Great. I've built some things for you. I need to be able to hold all my nacho ID. I need to be able to hold and create this cart. What do I want to name a method right, that is literally just my cart? Whoa. Great. And as we talked about, that it should be some sort of uh, array. Oops, session at a key of cart. 
should be some sort of array. Okay? Mm, the problem is it, it always resets. So in here we can add if session at a key of cart is, I don't know, nil, then make it an empty array. Otherwise, if it exists already, what should I get back? I should just get the cart right back because it already exists. Cool? All right, who likes being upset? Oh, yes, indeed. Cool? This is the refactor, right? This is just saying that the session at a key of cart is either going to be an empty array or if it already exists, just give it back to me. Cool? So this lecture is not entirely worthless. All right? The next thing we want to do is Inside my cart, inside my cart, I want to be able to like add in this nacho, right? Cool. All right. Well, yeah, we can get rid of this, right? Pfft, trash. Boom. The next thing is I want to be able to add the nacho into my cart. So let's see. Hmm. Let's make a method called I don't know. Add nacho to the cart, right? What is this right here? Is this a undefined variable or method? Will I get an undefined variable or method here? No, because what's that? I defined it. Wowzers. Right? And here I can push in the nacho. But where does the nacho come from? Can I pass it in? That nacho? Let's just write it out, right? I'm going to pass in the nacho. Cool. What you want to do is you want to pass in as little information as possible. Um, so for now, we'll just we'll use the nacho ID. That way, our cart is just a string. We also want to do this because you'll learn that sessions and cookies uh, cannot take objects. They can only take strings. So at some point, you'll see that this will break on you when you try passing in the object. You have to pass in strings. So here we'll just pass in the ID. Cool. That's just something that you'll run into as like it'll break, and you'll be like, wait, how? Like, what can I do now? So we have a method to add this nacho to the cart. Now we have a cart, so an array, full of nacho IDs, right? So once I keep clicking through, it's just going to keep adding. Are these IDs useful, or what do I really need? I need a way to transform these IDs into objects back in the view. So remember, they're strings as they get passed back and forth, but as an array of strings hits the back end, I want to be able to transform them into objects, display them on the page, and then still keep track of the session as just strings. So here on the back end, I need to transform these IDs into objects. So, hmm. Sure. Define, I need to find the nachos, right? Cool. Let me show you something. Uh, great, let's do this. Let's jump into whenever you're ready. Is it, okay. All right. Okay, I'm just. Oh, that was weird. That was weird. But still, bless up to Lord Rails. Anyways, uh, I could do nacho.find, and I could pass it in one. Yeah? Hmm. Cool. What happens if I pass it in an array of one, two, three? Wowzers, three nachos. So find takes an array. Powerful. Oh man, almost got me. Start the server back up. Shotgun. A little throwback. 
what I want to do is, uh, hmm, can I do nacho.find? I have to pass it in an array of IDs. What would possibly have an array of IDs? The cart. Cool. And now I need to pass these into the view. How can I create something so that this is available in the view? At nachos equals to nachos, I don't know, in my cart, something like that. Whatever you want to do, right? I'm just trying to get more specific so you can see that you can name it everything you want, anything you want. But great, cool. Boop, boop, boop. Nice. So I have this. Hmm, hmm, cool. Let's go back to my cart controller. Do I still need to do this? Or do I have a method that allows me to add a nacho to a cart? So I can get rid of this, bloop, and I can call add nacho to cart. Does the cart controller have access to the application controller's methods? Inheritance is beautiful. So nacho ID, I need to pass it a nacho ID. Where would I possibly have the nacho ID? Yeah, right? So far so good. Params at a key of ID. So now I've added it successfully, right? And now I'm going to redirect to the nachos path. Yeah? Okay. So far so good. Great. Where do I need this? Where do I want to actually call this and display on my view? Right. I need index, and I need to do something like uh, at nachos in my cart dot each. Right. I need to do this somehow. I'm really close. Where would at nachos come from that the index has access to it? Well, where does at nachos come from? Something is giving this view page instance variables. It must be in the nachos controller. I have to do something like uh, at nachos in my cart equals to, it's weird, right? I need this somehow. If only there was some sort of method that gave this to me, but it's all the way in the application controller. I wonder if I have access to it. Can I do find the nachos? Cool. So that means that if I do find the nachos, inside this index, do I have access to this instance variable? Great. Now let's take a look at the index. I know, powerful. These are nachos. Nachos. Uh, let's do this. Right, let's fix that up. Bloop, bloop. And then lastly, bloop, 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 bloop. The nachos dot name. Let's make these list items. Bloop, 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 bloop. bloop, bloop. All right. Whew. Do I, do I need this? Do I need this? Just get out of here. Trash. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look. Oops, let's go back to the index, refresh. Okay, nothing broke, that's good. Let's add danger dogs. Oh, dang! All right, let's add chicken pot pie nachos. Banging, whoa, let's refresh. Oops, that's not it, that's hard. <laughs> uh, don't look at that, that is actually a unclassified like army document. I should not have that open. <laughs> let's add trash cat nachos. Bam! All right, just because I said I would show you later. Look, let's look at, take a look at this show page. Nachos literally made in the garbage can in the alleyway behind the restaurant. So gross. Anyways, look. So if I open up a new incognito mode, all right, and I went to localhost 3000. Uh, where is this thing? Huh, I don't have them here. 
Why? Because it's a different session, right? So I can do, uh, I don't know, dessert nachos and trash can nachos. I can also add, I don't know, I don't know, just refresh this real quick. You'll see, I don't know, do you want, do you want some deluxe nachos? Yeah, let's do it. Those are expensive. Cool. So look, I can refresh this, and they're tracked separately. I can go back to my application. I can clear my cookies, which also removes the session. And because everything was kept in session, what should happen to my cart? Boop, gone. But here, I can add trash can nachos. Oh, I had it there already. Deep fried nachos, boom, no problem. They're domain specific, they're session specific. I mean, yeah, if it's impressive, you can go for it. I thought you had a question. Uh, The session is a hash that's built by Rails in the same way that Flash is a hash built by Rails. And it in, puts it inside the cookie, which is passed back and forth in every request. Okay, so, like, somewhere in Rails, there's going to be, though, like, a string regardless forever if you put cookies in it, or? If you what? And like, I just I want to make sure, um, like, if you, if you delete your cookie internally, yeah. Rails, Rails will still, like, know what that hash is, and just it'll be nowhere. Uh, it will still have that hash, but when you delete it, right, that session resets. For a user. Yeah, for that particular browsing session, if I delete the cookie, the rail session resets. I make a request, right? If I delete the cookie and I make another request to localhost 3000 slash nachos, it will first see, hey, do you have a cookie? And it'll be like, no, I just deleted it. Cool, let me give you a brand new one, and it'll have reset data, like nothing in it, really. Actually, that's not true, but for the purposes of like what we're doing here, it doesn't have any of that old data. Cool, were your questions on using the session hash? All right. It's literally just like Flash, except it persists more than one. <laughs> Selection wasn't like super complicated, but it just shows you like a cool thing you can do. Ja. Mm -hmm. But how long will you be able to actually add an application to the Like an instant variable add onto the cart? Absolutely. In the view. Yes. Like this is exactly, uh, that's a good question. The question is, uh, how do I have inside render index access to the instance variable? All right? Yeah. Right, cool. So, this is a common question, and I'm sorry I didn't go over it, but in this show, Right? What am I doing here? Have you seen this before? And it runs this method. So, can I do something that looks exactly like this? Oh, yeah, that's right. But only, actually, I don't need the array if I'm just doing one. And I go, do you see a difference between this and this? If I'm executing the method, if I'm invoking it, it will give me access to what's in the method. So that's kind of why I show it this way. You should not refactor it because you're only calling it once. Like, how, what are you saving? All right. But once, obviously, find nacho, you'll call it in like edit and destroy and all that. Then it makes sense to refactor. But I left that here to make this point exactly. So once you invoke the method, you have access to some variable. Does that answer your question? Perfect. Um, is there anything else on sessions, cookies? So, yeah? Question. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe it's the next step. But when you hit, let's say, order, like place order. Place order, OK. Like, like when you do a merchant, is that like delete the whole cookie or just go send? Or do you want to make 
That's a that's a good question. Like once I'm like, hey, I want to like buy the stuff, and then your shopping cart normally like empties out, right? You don't want to buy the stuff and then have all your stuff still be in your shopping cart. That's crazy. You'd like accidentally buy it twice all the time. So let's build that feature out and see if we can practice. Do we have, do we have time? Um, cool. If you guys want, I'll show you how to build like the delete feature. Otherwise, we'll just let you go work on your project. Who says build the delete? Oh, snap. Just kidding. I'm going to do it super fast. And then we'll go head over to the Wii. Cool? So the idea here is, again, that process. What I need is, and this time I didn't give it to you, right? Look up. Buy Nacho Town. Look up. Is I need some sort of button here that says empty the cart. Right? Or like a button that does like buy all the stuff and then we'll also empty the cart. It'll just call the empty cart method inside. So let's do that super fast. Inside my index, I can just do another button. Cool. Uh, I don't know, somewhere on the top. Uh, inside the cart, actually. Uh, just afterwards. Bloop. Button, right? It's like empty me. Right? I don't know. That sounds wrong. All right. Um, empty the cart. I don't know. Right. Uh, and it's going to go to some custom route, and they're just going to be like wanktron. Let's just do this. Uh, method, I don't know. Let's just do get, because we can do anything we want. Remember, you're in complete control. Uh, what do I really need, though? Do I need any of this? No. Nah. Not really. Let me get out of that. Cool. Do I have a route called wanktron? Right. Let's do that. This is fun get to wangtron is going to point to what? I don't know, probably the cart, right? The cart, and I want to like delete it. Delete or empty, right? Sure. Do I want to help her? Eh, I'm too late. <coughs> All right, inside my cart controller, I need what? Cool. Empty, right? What should this do? What, how am I tracking my cart right now? How am I tracking my cart? Cool. Session at a key of cart should in fact be empty. Uh, yeah, actually. Wow, how readable is that? Amazing. Bless up to Lord Gaines. That's it. That, that, I mean, honestly, that button would work. That's all it's going to do. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't redirect anywhere. I like, you guys are funny. Cool. This should, this should just empty it. What the? Oh, it's reassigning it here. I can't call cart. Well, that's all I got for you. Uh, I'm going to go change, take a five minute break, go to the bathroom. We will meet by the elevator or stairs? Stairs in five minutes and we'll take a tour of the week.